Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 109, Troy Casey, the Certified Health Nut, with our guest host, my son, Rem Pitlick. Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your co-host today, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we put on our learning caps, get our self-improvement groove on, and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's Sweet hockeycoach.com and watch the video on the home page for instructions. Thanks and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. So this is a special episode for Coach as we're about to experience something that's never happened on the Hockey Journey podcast. We have a guest host today and it happens to be my son Rem Pitlick. As a parent of two boys in their 20s, one life transition both my wife and I have enjoyed is when the kids started getting curious began asking questions, and started investing time into exploring their own thoughts and feelings without the guidance or influence of mom and dad. It's awesome at the start seeing your kids seek truths from their own perspectives, but when the learning is on a really big scale and they gain expert insight on topics such as nutrition, recovery, meditation, visualization, spirituality, and self-mastery, to mention a few, at least for me, there was a time where I needed to step up my game in order to be able to hold a high-level conversation on whatever the topic of the day was. One person that has been a very positive and impactful teacher for my boys and now myself is our next guest, Troy Casey, the Certified Health Nut, and I'm super excited to be able to consume all the goodness and learning golden nuggets that are about to be deployed here on the Hockey Journey Podcast. I've never met or spoke to Mr. Casey. I've just heard stories from my boys about him, listened to some podcasts of his, watched a couple YouTube videos, and most recently, finishing up his book, Hashtag Ripped at 50. But guess what? I'm not the grand pooba on this episode. It's our guest host show, and I'm going to settle in and enjoy the back seat I'm about to ride in for this conversation. Remmer? Please welcome our next guest on the Hockey Journey Podcast. Yeah, I like that intro, Dad. Appreciate that. I'm going to take my first swing at a professional, formal introduction that we'll actually get to, to real talking, but here we go. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast. My name is Rem Pitlick. I'm son of Coach Lance. I've had a friend that I've been wanting to get on my dad's podcast for a while now, and the time is here. Known by his large social media following as Certified Health Nut, I am proud to call Troy Casey my friend. We got to know each other through studying under Paul Check. And for those of you who don't know, Paul Check is a certified holistic health practitioner, licensed as as a medicine man through the Namenha Band and Native American Traditional Organization, and is a passionate studier of world religions. He is a highly sought after speaker, trainer, and consultant for some of the most iconic athletes, corporations, and people in the world, including Tony Robbins, Laird Hamilton, Adam Oates, Kobe Bryant, Mike Madano, the Chicago Bulls, and many others. One thing led to another, and I took Troy Casey's courses, Breath is Life, and Stress Management. I read his book, which was absolutely fantastic, as my dad said, Ripped at 50. He welcomed my brother, Rhett and I, to his home in Sedona for a barbecue. We connected at Paul Check's Zen in the Garden workshop, and most recently, I got to know his son, Troy Jr., who is a hockey player on the journey to the NHL. Troy is a man that brings heart, credibility, experience, and stands for holistic health, healing, longevity, sustainability, collaboration, and so much more. We are excited to introduce an authentic, fun, and definitely energized authority figure in the space of health, longevity, and healing. Troy Casey, welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Thank you so much. That was an awesome introduction, and I'm so grateful 
to be on this podcast. Lance, I saw some of your videos as well. And of course, I followed Ram and his journey in the NHL. Uh, and I'm so grateful. I love hockey and really the, the graceful yet rough and tough energy that uh, resides behind it. And uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. Let's go. Yes. So, Troy, what we do when I'm interviewing um, hockey greats uh, as well as masters in their sectors, i uh, like to give our listeners uh, just a little taste of, you know, what it was like growing up. Troy Casey, where, where did you grow up? Uh, were you, sports you played and then kind of work your way through to where you are today. Yeah, awesome. So uh, I was born in Connecticut and my parents were hippies. So we moved back and forth from Haight-Ashbury, San Francisco in the 60s. And uh, in the 70s, um, we moved to a lake up in Andover, Connecticut and swimming in the summers and uh, skating on the winters and playing hockey and lighting bonfires with Christmas trees and doing all sorts of, you know, kid mm-hmm. stuff. It was, it was out in nature and had a lot of fun. And uh, actually my f- brother was skating home one day. Well, you guys live up in Minnesota, so you probably know, you know, bodies of water, you have to watch out for thin ice. And so uh, he actually dropped in and almost drowned and froze to death and he was oh, wow. able to get out and, uh, uh, but we, we grew up on that lake. We, you know, skated in the winter, lots of swimming uh, in, the, in, in the summer, canoeing, and uh, really an ideal, you know, childhood uh, living out in nature. And so, uh, and then uh, my dad got some challenges with the FBI. He got, he got busted for uh, dealing hashish back in the day, which is now legal or marijuana is now legal. And so... Uh, <laughs> So he was facing a lot of time in, in, in prison. This was the early 80s in uh, the early 80s in uh, New England. And so uh, they sent me back out to uh, California, San Francisco Bay Area with some of their friends to stay with. So uh, and before that, I'd had some challenges uh, with my stepfather and, and I started running away from home uh, uh, right around that time. And I found myself on my own by the time I was 14. 15 years old. I was staying with some of their friends, but they, they were kind of up to no good as well. So I had to learn how to fend for myself. I ended up getting in some of my own trouble and uh, I was incarcerated as a youth. They let me out when I was 18. And, uh, and then I had, you know, plenty of intelligence and street smarts and I, I had some good teachers over the years. And, uh, and so I, I read literature and did a bunch of book reports when I was sitting in juvenile hall. And, uh, and when I got out, I was able to enter in regular high school again. I was 18. I graduated on time. And, uh, and then from there, I went to college. And uh, I got all sorts of financial aid because I had been on my own. And uh, I knew nothing about financial aid. I ran into one of my high school buddies. And he used to play varsity football. And I was like, how did you get financial aid? Like you live with your parents, all that stuff. And he goes, well, the last year I stayed with a friend because my parents moved away and that qualified me for the Pell Grant and all sorts of other stuff. So I went down, filled out the papers and, you know, I basically got a really strong free ride in college and, uh, you know, welfare makes people weak. And although I was working for it with my education, uh, it's still, I think I did three and a half years in community college uh, and was getting ready to transfer. And uh, that's when I started modeling. And so I was kind of on the fast track to nowhere in college and uh, got a decent education, Spanish, mathematics and stuff like that. And then uh, I got an opportunity to become a professional model and and move to Europe. And so I quit school. as soon as that opportunity presented itself. And then I started traveling, which I do believe is the best education on the planet, being submerged Mm. in other currencies, uh, other language, other culture. Um, And so I traveled extensively for seven and a half years. I was a Versace model. I went to Tokyo. I went to uh, Miami, New York, London, Paris, Vienna. I went to South Africa during apartheid. Um, I traveled all around the world. And uh, 
It was a great education, but a really weird and funky business. Politics in anything and everything, as, 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 as you probably have already realized. And I didn't see it coming. I gave it the real good college try, put together a resume, took care of myself. That's how I got into holistic health, fasting and uh, juicing and internal purification, because I wanted to look and feel the best in front of the camera. And uh, I had my own digestive issues. So I was motivated in that industry to do my best. And I put together a great resume, a great portfolio. But there was so many weird sexual innuendo games and you know, come to find out the whole entertainment industry and the music industry. You know, since then I was an actor and I've got a lot of friends in uh, the entertainment industry. And so it's just a weirdo energy and I didn't want to play any of those games. So um, I did what I did and then I moved on uh, gracefully. And, uh, um, but I did four Versace campaigns, which is kind of the height of that industry. I moved to Miami right when Miami was coming up and my agent down there wanted to come up as an agent, right? He wanted to make his mark in the fashion world. And uh, he helped Gianni Versace buy the mansion on Ocean Drive. One of his friends was in real estate. (laughs) They put the deal together. And then my agent was like, use my guys on your next campaigns. And, uh, and so I ended up doing four campaigns. So that's a little bit of my becoming and, entry into health uh since i was in front of the camera i stayed healthy and then i got into partying a little way too much and when i sobered up i found meditation i found indigenous maori healers uh ayahuasca and the amazon and uh and then my journey as a certified health nut has kind of been unfolding uh since then wow that's a lot to unpack there thank you for sharing trey um (laughs) <laughs> so cool just traveling everywhere you're a good looking guy we got to give it to you definitely a good looking guy um one thing that i wanted to touch on is just i i found you online through social media because i'd gotten in touch with paul check i'd done some coaching with him and that was a huge like transformative time in my life and i just i love paul's work and then you know i started to follow other people that were following paul and you were someone that just stuck out to me and like i kind of said in the intro just like you're fun energy but at the same time you you know what you're talking about because of your hard-earned experiences and I just wanted to hear a little bit more how you found Paul because you know when we've talked you've talked about how he has been super transformative for your life so I was just curious like how your road led to meeting up with Paul yeah so in 2006 I was in the Amazon drinking ayahuasca and I had three very powerful visions one was uh of my family and I wasn't married at the time and um you know, I wasn't planning on having kids anytime soon. And that changed down in the Amazon. Then I had a vision of the amalgamation of my online career. Um, in, uh, well, no, I had a vision of uh, my career in front of the camera. I was doing stand-up comedy at the time. And I had been studying natural medicine uh, since my Versace days, fasting and all that stuff. And the amalgamation of that uh, came together. And the certified health nut was born in the Amazon. When I came out of the jungle, YouTube was a brand new reality. And I had all this digital footage on one of those old uh, digital cameras. And I was like, oh, wow, I have a distribution platform. Oh, let me just upload some of this. And so I did. And then some it was new and not a lot of health people were working in the Amazon rainforest. And so uh, I instantly got uh, notoriety. My son was born in water uh, in, in my living room. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and then, um, so natural childbirth and, and, uh, plant medicine in the Amazon really opened up my YouTube career. And then who's on the internet? Well, you got young guys on steroids and then you got vegans and that was basically it. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, that, that's not a really good cross section of health. And then yeah. there was this guy, Paul check teaching with his shirt off. <laughs> and, he, and he was yoked and deadlifting 450 pounds. And he, and, and he was almost 50. And I was like, holy smokes, who is this guy? So that would have been that would have been around 2008. I probably saw his first video. And then I kept on watching other videos. And one of the, the best nutrition video on the whole entire Internet is called uh, Di- uh, what was it Nutrition, the Dirt Facts. It was his... Uh, 
his lecture and his dissertation uh, in um, CanFit Pro in Canada, which is uh, the biggest sports fitness show in the world, CanFit Pro. In 2000, it was filmed in like 2003 or 2004. It's mm-hmm. called Nutrition, the Dirt Facts. You can actually buy it from Paul's website. Um, and it's the best nutrition video on the world. Blew my mind. This is back when YouTube only had 10-minute videos. And so you have to watch like 10 or 15 videos in a row. And he didn't even talk about macronutrients. He talked about the soil and what actually makes up nutrition and the closed organic life cycle. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind. And so <laughs> then I continued to follow him for a couple of years. And he wrote a blog in 2011 about sustainability and kind of like, well, if you don't dirty your clothes, don't use too much water. You know, if it's if it's yellow, it's mellow. You know, you don't have to flush the toilet. Just real conservative, you know, values around the environment. And don't use pesticides unnecessarily and and don't buy, uh, you know, commercial soaps that have detergents in them that are toxic. And like all the stuff I've been living and breathing. And I literally I was in tears. It was mm-hmm. the Earth Day. It was the Earth Day blog, March of 2011, I do believe. And so I'd been following some 2008 to 2011. And there I was in tears. And I was just like, I have to meet this man. And so I went on his website, looked at his curriculum. He wasn't teaching the uh, first courses like HLC1, his instructors were. And so I had to sign up for HLC2. I had to buy all his prerequisite. I dropped, I dropped like 10 grand just to meet the uh-huh. guy. And mm-hmm. so, uh, and then my friend was doing a movie called The Cure Is You. And I was like, you have to get Paul Check uh, in, that, in that video, in that movie. And uh, he did. And then I went and filmed Paul for the pickups. They needed to get some uh, pickups for the movie. And uh, I went and filmed him. And uh, just before that, my raw food club had gotten busted. We used to get raw cheese and raw milk from the Amish in Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, drive it out to LA every week uh, and uh, grass fed meats. And it it was a, it was a high quality food club and LAPD and the FBI uh, and the FDA came in and busted it. And they threw $50,000 worth of food away, like 800 gallons of milk. How's that for sustainability? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so I interviewed Paul on that and did some editing. He loved the editing. I launched it. It was a huge success. And we've been friends ever since. And I love Paul. He's amazing. Oh, he's so awesome. That's really cool. And I I think it's so cool just hearing you talk about your story. And I know you're talking about your visions. And it's just interesting. I feel like I've just listened to so many stories. It's the same thing over and over again. Like you all of a sudden you draw those connections. You're a comedian. You had the modeling, the camera. And you had to do the health stuff to be better at modeling. And it just connected you that way. And then how cool is the internet to be able to find someone? Then, you know, you, you pay your cash, you meet a guy, you make a connection, and here you are. And, and now you're basically like returning the favor, paying it forward and, and sharing so much of your unique knowledge through your path. It's, I, I love that. I, I had a, a similar journey with, with Paul. I, I definitely tracked him down and <laughs> spent a little bit to, to finally get him, but uh, he's been, he's been huge in my life. Um, Cool, cool. One other question I had, just kind of thinking off the top of my head, um, because I read your book, like, it was probably when it was more coming out. I remember DMing you on Instagram. I think that was, where did your book come out? Five years ago? Four years ago? Yeah, it came out in 2020. Yeah, so right around that time, that's when I met Paul, and I was was DMing with you, and so that's when I read the book, um, because I ordered it. I remember you talking about your, your black mold exposure. And going back to your your modeling stuff, you're a good looking guy. And one thing that I notice is like, you do like to have your shirt off too. And you have a very nice stomach. And you talk about you, I've heard you talk about your digestive issues on certain podcasts. And I think you had a a long one with Ben Greenfield, just talking about some of your, your routines around digestion. We'll get to that a little bit later, but I kind of going around all over the place, but I want to understand a little bit more how you kind of tackled the black mold and, and got over that because I've heard some, some not so good stories and that's quite the one to overcome. I wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, you know, black mold is deadly, right? Stracobotrys, Aspergillus penicillium. It's also prevalent in our environment. I mean, these are the natural microbes and bacteria and fungus. These are, you know, natural elements of our life here on Earth. And 
you know, houses, if they get a drip behind the wall with uh, a leaky pipe or something like that, it can build moisture. And uh, it's really bad here in, in Phoenix because you've got the extreme heat. You've got air conditioning. It can be bad in Florida as well because of the, the ducks, they get all dirty. And so um, we were in a house, in a penthouse in Santa Monica, and they had flooding. I finally talked to one of the neighbors, and they had flooding like uh, uh, a couple of times in a row, ankle, ankle deep water uh, in a penthouse. And so it ends up getting in the walls. And we moved into it. It was dry. It was summertime. Um, we didn't know anything about mold. Now I'm very wary. I can walk into a building and know if it's right or if I'll get contaminated. And so um, because we've already been injured, it's easy to get re-injured. And so uh, the mold uh, has mycotoxins. Uh, they off gas these, these spores that are deadly. And uh, so I had weird neurological issues. I'm a barefoot walker. I'm an active person. I like to be out in the sun. And in 2012, uh, I remember I got, it was like pneumonia. My lungs were on fire. I don't go to the doctor. That's the doctor's not my bag of tricks. Um, it's just not uh, a business that I frequent. And so uh, um, for hook or crook, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my thing. I don't go to the doctor. And so mm -hmm. I didn't go to the doctor, but my lungs were burning. I was bedridden for seven days and I'd never like to be bedridden. If I'm sick, I'm still out moving in the sun. And so mm -hmm. I was bedridden for seven days and then it lingered hardcore in and out of bed for a month. And so, and I did the math when we moved out, we were sick five times a year, upper respiratory infections, and uh, from 2010 to 2013. And so, and I just thought, and that's right when Athena came, my second child, and um, I started having children uh, in my 40s, and my wife was uh, almost uh, 40 at the time. So... We just thought we were just exhausted. I knew the exhaustion was coming, but uh, I just thought I was exhausted. Well, lo and behold, we had a smart, we had six smart meters outside of our living room and smart meters have uh, cell phone uh, radiation. And then uh, the cell phones and the laptops were all brand new. I remember my nuts used to be on fire with my laptop. I put it on a pillow and start doing work and and so, and again, I was building my career online, right? And it was all mm -hmm. new, how to, mo how to monetize yourself online. And uh, uh, in the meantime, I just made sure that I, I had content out there and I was touching people's lives. So I was on the internet and lo and behold, I did research with Dr. Dietrich Klinghart. Ambient Wi-Fi allows mold to proliferate at 600%. It helps the mold grow. And so, uh, and... He, I think they put a Faraday cage over it and uh, he tested it. And so he had the research because this is when all the information on the smart meters were coming out because the smart meters are pulsing the cell towers, uh, I think, uh, multiple times per minute uh, with information. And so uh, so I had six smart meters on my back wall. I had mold in, in uh, um, on my living room wall. I had mold in the the. Uh, in the walls as well. One room was even worse. And, uh, and then I started to get neurological issues in my legs. So not only did I have all these upper respiratory infections and, and just kind of sickness, um, but I started getting neurological issues and weird arthritis that would go from joint to joint. So, you know, it's classic autoimmune. You've got chronic fatigue and you've got, you know, other things going on with you pain and so number one paul check told me to get out right mm -hmm. and when the when the master speaks you know and paul uh, and paul's like a wise man right so when he yeah. speaks you can either listen or be not wise right yeah. and so i didn't really want to hear it because a man with a young family at 40 uh you got to move in LA and Google just moved into my neighborhood. So all sorts of challenges, rents were going up, uh, you know, living on the beach and, um, it was very stressful. We, we ended up moving 15 or 16 times since 2013. And, wow. uh, and I guarantee the mold had, uh, a play on our emotions and we're divorced now. 
And uh, yeah, I healed really well for getting my book out because 2015, I was feel, still feeling like crap. And then I started to push my book out and uh, I did some very esoteric protocols. And, uh, and then this year I was hit. Last year I was hit with my son. We went into a ice rink that should be condemned, the Arcadia Ice Rink in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. The place, I mean, it already is a, a you know, a, a pie hole. The thing's terrible. You walk in, it's all run down. And yeah. so, and then it rained when it was 115 degrees out there. And I walked in there, it was like a black, uh, it was like a cloud of black mold. And so uh, Troy got sick and then he got sick again. And he was on a travel team uh, practicing at, at this, at this Arcadia ice den. And, uh, I, and he was on the ice like uh, uh, 10 times a week and he was in a prep academy. And I said, listen, if you get sick one more time, I'm pulling you off that team because I, I knew the place was contaminated. Sure enough, yeah. he got sick, he got this little cough and it wouldn't go away. And I pulled him off the ice and he got better. So, yeah. but in the meantime, I got hit and that lasted all the way up into the last couple of months. March, I thought I was losing my mind. Anyways, I've just been getting so much sun. I've been doing some more esoteric protocols. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's a little bit of a battle, but I've had enough people have MS or chronic fatigue or, you know, fibromyalgia or these kind of incurable, just big pains in the ass, which overwhelm you. And I refuse to just be sick. I told myself when I was a kid, if I get AIDS or cancer, I'm going to solve my own problems. And so, um, so I just, you know, I refuse to take that to my grave. I will overcome. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's, I really appreciate that mentality with it, but that's definitely like, that's not easy. And, you know, I, I have my radar up for some of those things with the, with the mold stuff. I think I watched Dave Asprey's moldy movie a couple of years ago, and it definitely heightened my awareness for different things like that. So, I'm conscious of it in and, and the, and the hockey rinks. They're, uh, they're all over the place. And, um, you know, I, I can appreciate the attunement for you to like be aware of it, but at the same time you have that mentality to just say like, screw it, I'm going to be fine and I'll get through it. And um, I think that's really cool. Um, one thing, one, another thing. You know, well, let, me, let me, let me, let me just end on that though. Yeah. though let me elaborate. So I have to practice my own medicine. I've got the nine pillars of health. In my book, I've got the seven factors of stress. I've got my stress management program. So I have to practice Qigong. I have to practice. I, I get to practice. I get to practice grounding, earthing, sunlight, clean eating, clean water, all the purest stuff that I teach and preach about in my book because you don't need the fancy esoteric stuff until you've at least covered those bases. Mm -hmm. So I practice what I preach, and that is exactly how I heal my body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and that's what I wanted to get into. I'm sure some of the, some of the listeners are wondering, Coach Lance, what is Rem talking about? This is a hockey podcast. And I promised everyone we'll get there and we're going to get there right now. Um, so I, I was trying to, you know, draw some connections here. Like Paul is a, is a very reputable guy with some of the experiences you learned under, under him. We've talked about the modeling and just your worldly experience. That's something that Troy, I, I was really drawn to. Like you're not just, I know that you've been in the jungle and you're talking about these esoteric things, but you're, you're a guy that will, pull his pants up and just get to work. You know, you have that work ethic and that drive, but you also have that kind of intuitive, more, I guess, feminine way of doing things. And you combine them both. And that's something that I think is really cool. And it's, it's what draw me to you. You have this education, like I said, the education and worldly experience, and now you're out there teaching it. Anyone can find you. You have a huge following on social media and you have a lot of expertise and wisdom in the health, wellness, personal training, fitness, whatever you want to call it, kind of all the buzzwords in that space. And so bear with me for, a couple, maybe one more minute. Um, it's kind of, it's a one question from my dad and I, the most important question, but I, I kind of want to add a few more things in there because I kind of want the answer for myself. And uh, the question is um, more of a statement first than coming to a question is I've been playing hockey for over 20 years now. And I feel like the same thing is said to me at the end of the year, whether it's by uh, the personal trainer, the coach or the general manager, it's said different because it's, you know, said by everyone different but it, it's the same thing is really being said it's some version of you know go have a great summer and get stronger or harder or whatever other buzzword they use go and go do that in the gym and 
and, you know, come back and have a great year. And my dad and his business partner and I were looking at some of their surveys that they've, um, you know, they've done with, with their business online hockey training. And, you know, everyone has, you know, their skills coach, but everyone has their strength, strength coach. And that's highly emphasized in the hockey world and sports industry. And I think it's very important. And one thing for me that was always challenging, and maybe that was the point, so I could kind of follow my own curiosity or my own interests and things that were fun, is like, I feel like I never was told, like, what does it mean to get strong? What does it mean to get harder? Like, these things kind of get, you know, Paul used the word meme, like these things kind of get like thrown around. So I had to kind of go explore and find out what that meant for myself. And I started to get into martial arts and different conversations. I went through the gauntlet of all the coaches and stuff. But, um, you know, you start talking and you start seeing things, you know, some po- topics that were talked about. I was like, well, what is strength? You know, these guys are huge, but they can't like move their body. So technically, you know, they're so big that their muscles are getting in the way of their movement. So they're actually not punching as hard or kicking as hard or moving as fast because their muscles in the way, are in the way. And then I'd be rolling with, with smaller guys in jujitsu that were like half my size and they'd be tanking me. So I was like, what is this strength? So now to kind of wrap it up, why I was drawn to you and Paul is because I felt like that was the first time where people actually looked at things from a holistic perspective and it wasn't just blanket statements anymore. It wasn't, you know, go get better, go get stronger or go get harder. Like, like I would always be like, well, what does that mean? Like, teach me. And I feel like you guys do a great job at articulating and explaining what that means. So you have a son, as we mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, Troy Jr., who is on his way to becoming an NHL player. And you have a lot of wisdom in the health and wellness fitness space. What are you telling your son to do or to focus on to help him become the best hockey player that he can become? Yeah, well, great question. So, you know, first and foremost, I coach or I teach, you know, high performance balance. All the ancient sages have said, walk the middle path, right? And so um, you have yin and yang, masculine, feminine, anabolic, catabolic, right? Anabolic is the phase when you're sleeping, resting, you're rebuilding. That's when your muscles build. Catabolic is in the gym. You're breaking the body down. And so there is no one thing that is, right, um, better than the other. You need both. They're complementary opposites. This is the dualistic paradox that we live in. This is the dualistic world that we live in. Uh, uh, Light, dark, you know, up, down, masculine, feminine, inhalation, exhalation. And so you can't have one without the other. So you need balance. The body requires balance. Now you can get through hormesis or stress, you can get a stimulus that helps you grow. You can punch a wood block and you can build strength in your bones and bone marrow, uh, et cetera. And so um, there, there is um, the stress component, which is hormesis. Elevated chronic stress, if you're working out too much, you're tr- overtraining, uh, plus you add to it caffeine, which speeds up the metabolism. Uh, it's, a, it's a narcotic effect on the body. Um, you know, you can burn yourself out. So everything is about balance. So sleep is just as important as, um, you know, weightlifting or plyometrics or um, uh, stick handling, if you will. You need everything, but you're going to mm-hmm. restore and replenish. Like if you get injured, right? Injury, nothing fixes an injury better than resting, right? You're not going to just, you know, you see these MMA fighters. Conor McGregor just uh, snapped his ankle, right? He had bursitis and then the thing finally broke down. It snapped in half, right? And so he's been out for two years, right? He's been nursing that thing for two years, went on a bunch of cycles of steroids, all sorts of stuff. But he hasn't gone back into the arena. He hasn't been, um, um, you know, training super hard on that actual leg. And so he's letting it repair. So again, back to high performance balance. So, and as above, so below is the natural law of correspondence. Um, Strong mind, strong body, flexible mind, flexible body. And so it applies across the board. How you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So you can be supreme. You can be Kobe Bryant and keep practicing more than anyone else out there and keep throwing your throws. But I guarantee his nutrition is on point. Why do I know that? Because Paul helped on his Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, guarantee he's going to have good sleep patterns. I think LeBron James talks about this as well. 
I think LeBron James, last time I checked, he spent he was spending about one point five million dollars on his health each year. Massage therapy, uh, PMF. Um, you know, he's probably got a sauna. He's got this at his house. He's got this coach, that coach. Right. He's not just the man on the court. Right? He's also the man off the court. And I think his sleep is supreme. Somebody, I think he's on that app called Calm and he's got some kind of meditation on it for sleeping or something like that. So these guys are, are, are no dummies, right? And I think there's an illusion, especially at the more amateur level, whether that's in business or anything else, but I especially see it in business. You see these internet guys that want to drive Lambos talking about crushing it and hustle, hustle, grind, grind, grind. And they're pounding coffee and they're shooting steroids and they're, you know, they think they're going to be young forever, which is great. But eventually that type of stuff hits a wall and you do need that balance. And if you burn out, you're of use to no one. It's the same thing as a parent. If a parent doesn't take care of themselves when they have new children, they can also burn themselves out. So I think it really comes down for me to balance because I like to burn the candle at both ends. I stayed up when I was in my twenties, you know, but now I don't, me I don't mess with my sleep unless I want a sleep hangover. I don't eat gluten and pasteurized dairy and commercial food because I know what that'll do to my gut. And when my, my, when my gut gets upset and I get indigestion, I bloat like a tomato, my face blows up. So I just don't do it. I've got 33 years into my practices. I Know what works and what doesn't work. And look, I'm a high performance athlete. I like to get out there and move my body for hours at a time during the day, whether that's walking or riding my bicycle or socializing or jumping in the pool or jumping in the ocean. I want my apparatus to work all the time. I go to the gym. A lot, a lot of the gym is for social, but I, I get, I get, you know, 20 minutes to an hour of stretching, some cardio, some weightlifting. You know, most days of the week, I like to go hiking. You know, I want full access to my apparatus. And at 57 years old, things have slowed down a little bit. I think I'm just going through a repairing phase because of the black mold. But I plan on coming back like gangbusters in my 60s. I got a friend who's doing a competition right now. He signed up for it last week because he walks around yoked. He, I did a live with him yesterday on my Instagram. And... uh he just got off a six mile trail run and you know, you can have your energy forever. You can play and be healthy. What was the name of that pitcher that played into his forties? Uh, Nolan Ryan. It, yeah, there you go. I mean, and so, you know, and you cup, you throw in and some people are like genetic anomalies, right? Mm -hmm. They got ne the, the Neanderthal gene. They can eat anything and they can go through anything and they come out looking like a spring chicken. And so, but if you, if you throw holistic health on top of your awesome talent, organic, nutritious food, damn good sleep, you know, from the beginning of your career, you have such more of an edge on everyone else. Cause let's face it, you get into the NBA, you get into the NFL, you're sponsored by Snickers, Gatorade. This stuff is garbage. Yeah. You can get away with it in your twenties, but as Paul check told me, he would coach a lot of these guys and they'd have injuries and it was directly related to what they were eating. And they're like, well, well, organic food's too expensive. And he's like, well, sell that Ferrari you just drove up here. Yeah, he loves yeah. that story. I love that so, one. So, so, yeah, it all comes down to choice and, 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 and balance. And this comes from a person who had plenty of vices in his life as well. And mm -hmm. so, but taking care of the human body is going to pay huge dividends. And as you well know, I'm sure uh, some of uh, the holistic – health stuff has applied into your own career. Am I right, Rem? Yeah, absolutely. And what comes to my mind, I think there are so many different moments in my life where I got more interested, but this was, this was many, many years ago when, when Tom Brady came out with his book, um, the TB12 method. And I don't agree with every single thing in there, but Tom is someone that is one of the best ever. And he talks about some of these principles that aren't just specifically football training. And that changed my life. And there was a quote in the book. I can't, I'm not going to say it exactly, but it was somewhere along the lines of what you were just saying. Like, you know, when you get into your 60s, you want to have your full vitality and on and on. And Tom kind of said similar things. And that was around the first time where I started to like, contemplate, like, yeah, like I'm around some older people at times and they're always complaining that they hurt and all these different things. But Tom's old playing in the NFL and he's getting banged around and he's still looking great, feeling great, all those different things. And all of a sudden Paul came into my life. Like you said, he had that same effect on me. He's, 
he's an older dude and he's like probably stronger than me. And then I was at the Zen the Garden workshop last year with you. And I know that you said that some of the mold effects were bothering you last summer. But I remember when we started stacking rocks because we were on the same team, you're like, let's build the Taj Mahal. Like you had the most energy <laughs> and strength like in our group. And so like I just started to connect the dots that way and just, you know, kind of ranting a little bit and, and come back to some of the things that you talk about in your book and, and your courses of, of what you're teaching your son because I had a conversation with them the other day. But, you know, on, on all the flights, you know, in between games with the team, I, I really bonded with a, a player um, on the Minnesota Wild. His name is Nick Bukestad. A lot of Minnesota people know him, obviously. But he, he talked about his time with the Pittsburgh Penguins and was talking about Crosby and just how Crosby has created this thing in Pittsburgh where there is some nutritious stuff. There's different things where there are other things outside of hockey that aren't necessarily hockey that directly impact your game on the ice. And one other little story that I'll add in there is that you mentioned Kobe Bryant with the Achilles. I was just with Paul and Angie last month and Angie was doing some physical assessments on me and Paul came in and he goes, Hey, you need to go to uh, our new doc in San Diego here. Um, and he said, this is the guy that I sent Kobe Bryant to. So you brought up Kobe and just like, you're right. You're, you're teaching high performance balance and all these superstars, you might not hear it as much in the media, but they have all their money to spend on these coaches and things because they know that, yes, they need to work on their reps, but what about when you're not working on your reps? You need to take care of your health so your body can hold up to keep doing the reps. And I think that's where you're such an asset um, with your knowledge and the people that you've been in front of that you just have such amazing wisdom to share. And that's why I've always been drawn to you. Like I said, I, I read your book. I took your courses. I follow you on Instagram. I went through, <laughs> oh my gosh, like all your YouTube videos. I've been in the archives too. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, I just love what you do. Like, I, I just kind of want to just keep going where, we're, where we were. Like, you know, I was talking to your son, Troy Jr. the other day, and he was just talking about some of the things that, you know, you were suggesting for him to do. He said he's been doing some martial arts. Was he, is he doing some martial arts right now or some of the workout stuff? He was asking me some questions. I can't remember exactly what he's saying, but he's like, yeah, my dad wants me to try some of these things. So what are you, you know, what are the, the real things that you're actually telling him right now? Well, I like him. You know, when we were living together these past eight months, when he was in the academy, we get good sleep. He goes to bed on time. He's a kid, so he wants to play video games. And I didn't, he didn't have access to a computer up until. One second. What's the, what's the right time to go to bed? Uh, well, 10 to 6 is a good marker. Children are developing, especially uh, men, boys will develop up until 24, 25 years old. And you can definitely get 12 to 14 hours sleep as a child. Your organs are still developing as well uh, and just providing that atmosphere. So, but people don't get to bed uh, that early. Sometimes I let them sleep in, but uh, for the most part, I, I like them to get to bed around nine, nine thirty. You know, yeah. he's still, he's still a child. Uh, but for adults, 10 to 6 AM are good markers. I'm a nine hour guy sometimes. And so uh, my body needs, more rest. I like re really deep sleep. Some people are seven hours, seven to nine hours is, is average, but sleep is very good, right? You can always, you can get more on the weekends or whatever you can fit it in. And so, um, so I'm always, you know, enforcing that he, he's a meat eater. He really likes steak. And so we're always barbecuing, uh, and trying, you know, different meats and stuff like that. Uh, he likes fish. And so, but he knows to eat clean. And of course he's a kid. So he's found his way to Skittles and Starburst and Starburst. And, you know, then I got to <laughs> bust them. And, you know, I've got cavity problems. I've got teeth problems from when I was younger and I didn't have the supervision and I had my own money from my paper route and I would buy bubble yum and all sorts of sugar stuff and I'm paying the price. So I definitely, you know, reinforce that to him and he understands and then anytime I see him stepping out of line that's going to affect his game, I remind him. That's, I'm, I'm one of his coaches. I'm his dad. I'm here to remind him. And he's such a, a, a good child. He's a, he's a great son that uh, he, he listens. And so, um, so it's, really, it's really easy working with my son. And he, it shows on the ice, too. Uh, he applies his stuff, and it, it shows – this year is a big development year, and so we're going to start to see his talents really come out. Um, and so, um, and all the work that he's put in this past year, uh, you know, it shows on the ice and with his coaches. 
And so I forgot what question you asked me, but yeah, uh, I was just, I was just asking. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask a little bit about the sleep because I, I have my I know what the right times are, what Paul says in his book. But just for people listening, like there's a lot of different stuff on sleep, so I kind of wanted to go on a little bit of a side tangent there. But yeah, specifically what you're what you're telling Troy Jr. You talked about the sleep, you talked about the nutrition, and you know he's applying on the ice. You know, I, like I said, I took your movement course um, and stress management and breathing so there's movement involved and i know your education with paul like what what are the the movement practices that you're having him do to keep his body like mobile and functional to be able to move and have good balance on the ice well i think he's getting most of that training from his programs and his coaches so um i've taught him you know the 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 compound uh exercises squats deadlifts dips pull-ups push-ups you know, those are the fundamentals. And then um, I've had some trainers teach him some plyometrics. Uh, we do some fascia workouts uh, from the tips of the toes, engage through the core, swinging kettlebells and, you know, just real engagement for the fascia. I've taught mm-hmm. him that. Uh, I take him to a lot of yoga. So we, we belong to a, a nice gym that has a really good yoga program. And, uh, and we've done some yin yoga, not just the power yoga stuff, the asana flows. We've done some, some yin yoga, which is very relaxing and it stretches the tendons. And so he's gotten benefit from that. I send him to my myofascial, um, uh, therapist. He's got a chiropractor, uh, reflexologist in Los Angeles. He sees Dr. Dave and, uh, uh, any, you know, uh, big healers that I work with that I resonate with. I've got him a uh, Taoist sexual Kung Fu counselor, just in case he needs any advice on uh, his genitalia and his sexuality. And so, um, you know, in exercises, he can do that to keep up his vitality with chi. And mm-hmm. so, um, um, you know, and also opening up his mind because uh, the sexual energy is the most powerful creative force that we have. And when it's cultivated properly and channeled properly, you know, we can move the worlds. I mean, we can create worlds. If you, if you, if you make a couple Elon Musks along the way and he goes out and, you know, occupies Mars and then goes from there, it's like, you can create worlds, right? So we can create babies with that type of energy and with young men, especially with the testosterone, you can also make a lot of mistakes. So I wanted to make sure he was equipped, um, you know, and, and, and uh, he knows what he's doing and he knows the power of that energy and the repercussions. And so I provide all of the information so he can go out and make his own mistakes. I'm not here to browbeat him. I made plenty of mistakes, probably way more than he's going to make. But I want to give him the, the, the education and the information so that I didn't have so that he can navigate the world uh, a lot better because the world is weird. So we talk about contracts. I've been in the entertainment business for years. People try and take advantage of you. They exploit you, et cetera. And so I tell him to keep his eye on everything. And, uh, um, and then there is, there is skating and playing hockey. And then there is the business of hockey. Rem, you shared some of that with me, uh, with, with, with your business and, and, you know, just you, we think that we've arrived when we get to the NHL, but as you well know, then there's a whole series of other, you know, issues. The same thing happened with me in business. The same thing happened with me when I was in the entertainment industry. And so you just pick yourself up and keep going, but getting your mindset ironclad, nothing's more powerful than a made up mind, setting his intentions, his goals, the ideas around becoming a champion on and off the ice, right? Cause you're, he's not just a, a showboat and he hasn't showed those type of skills where scouts are like scouting him right now at 15 years old. So he still has to be, you know, a team player, well-rounded, well-behaved because coaches look out for that. So I talk to him about everything. And so, and then also his expectations, injuries, uh, you know, any kind of potential, you know, you get so far and then maybe you get let down or, you know, keep your my eye on business, son. Use your use your uh, your goal towards going to NHL and your sports performance and all that. Use that. Have your mind on entrepreneurial endeavors, how you're going to make money or build businesses either while you're playing hockey or after you're playing hockey, because those contracts don't last forever. 
And so, so I, you know, I'm preparing him for, for the world uh, as much as, 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 as much, as much as I can. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I, I really like that. Um, and, and that's coming back to the beginning. That's, that's what really drew me to you is like the, the 360 degree lens, because I'm definitely someone that has made plenty of mistakes. And I, I'm kind of someone that I love my reps. Uh, you know, my, my dad has his business online hockey training and, I'm sitting right now downstairs in our underground garage that he has decked out with his, his old company that he sold with, you know, the, uh, what are they called? The hockey training aids. He has the flooring, the net with the shooting tarps, all the stick handling things. Like I've spent my life in this basement and I went through life and all of a sudden I realized that, well, there are some other things I need to consider. Like it's all about hockey, but like there's some other things that are coming into play here that like, well, I need to look at this. And I kind of think about, um, George St. Pierre's book um, that one of the best MMA fighters for anyone who doesn't know. Um, I think he's from Montreal or somewhere in Quebec, mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he talked about his, his learning process of just how once you learn something, then a whole new world of possibilities opens. So his, his wisdom is like, the more, you know, the, the less, you know, because like now you, there's a whole new universe of new things that you need to learn and kind of mm -hmm. drawing back to, to your, your comments about, uh, sexual sexual kung fu um i can't say that i've ever heard any other guests on the hockey journey podcast talk about se sexual kung fu and to be honest i just want to touch on that because it's not that weird like that kind of sounds a little bit weird but i think i think napoleon hill mentions that in think and grow mm -hmm. rich like the power of sexuality and just how it's not it, it sounds a little bit weird when you say sexual kung fu but it's really not that weird like a lot of parents are concerned about my kid's going through puberty and like what happens if he gets a girl pregnant he ruins his whole life or just the hormones are coming and, you know, boys want to, I'm speaking for boys right now, but maybe a boy wants to impress a girl and he uses that energy to like get better at hockey per se, to get the girl. It's just the energy of what's the word, like polarity between sexes. It's kind of like a creative energy. So it's, it's not that crazy. So if anyone thinks I'm crazy for talking about it, Troy Casey or Troy Casey's crazy for talking about it, go read Think and Grow Rich by Nat Napoleon Hill. Like, uh, I think it's a pretty, like modest book like it's really cool and it's it's not that weird so um well I, I would, yeah go ahead it is his chapters on sexual transmutation and channeling it and i think he interviewed the industrial magnets of the 20th century and a lot of them had gone through that process i just went through a divorce and uh i realized you know i'm building my business i'm maintaining my business i'm advancing my career i have my children and the weird, the world is kind of weird right now. And there's a lot of entitlement being thrown around there and this digital dating thing. And then the, the men, we all have porn mind, women too, as well, because pornography is so easily accessible. And then you've got hookup culture started in the seventies with swingers and all that stuff. And it's come up to the point where people don't even know who they are. They have sex and it's very powerful and it's very enjoyable, but also there's an emotional component on the back end and there's a huge responsibility you cannot just have sex with a woman and not have some kind of emotional entanglement some kind of spiritual entanglement what i'm doing is is trying to uh sew up a lot of the mistakes that i made and then if my children go out and fall on their face at least they were prepared and at least they can take responsibility that's the other thing there's no entitlement on my watch right just because you make a mistake if you can admit that you're wrong, you know, you're, you're, or, or ask for forgiveness, you're off the hook, but you still get to take responsibility for your actions. So there, there ultimately is no free lunch is, is my message. Mm -hmm. I think I really we should hold on. Remember, I got to interject here. I think we need to take a little breath work. Take, <laughs> this is, this has been awesome. Uh, I just, I wanted to, to jump in and I apologize, Rem, uh, this has been so informative and I, what I'm, what I'm hearing, you know, I haven't had a, a, a podcast interview like this at all. I mean, they're, they're all real, but I mean, we're getting really real. I mean, you're, you're <laughs> throwing, well, you are, you know, people are, uh, you know, uh, I, myself, I mean, I, I've, I've been guilty of that as well, where you don't want to have those hard conversations or uh, just even speak of it. Uh, you just rather bury your head in the sand. Um, so I, I just have one question. You know, if I look at um, what you're really saying in a nutshell is that you're providing all the puzzle pieces 
to live, a, as you put it, a high performance, balanced life. And your nine pillars are the legacy pillar, food pillar, rest pillar, movement pillar, breath pillar, thought pillar, relationship pillar, water pillar, nature pillar. Then we got the stressors, physical, chemical, psychic, nutritional, thermal, uh, electric, electromagnetic fields, digital communications, those are all stressors. How is a person that, you know, has to work a full-time job, uh, where, do, where do they start, Troy? How do, how do they, if, if they're living, if their life is not, they're not happy and they're, they're, they're sore, they're, 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 they're not in a good relationship, where does someone start? You started somewhere. You were in a dark place at one time. How did you begin? Well, uh, Lance, I mean, it's ultimately it's the same thing with what if somebody wants to, you know, master uh, the slap shot, right? It's a step by step process and your commitment to the consistency and whatever other factors lead up to that slap shot. You have to practice and keep practicing. Somebody wants to be a black belt. It's punch, block, kick. You do that 10, 20, 30, 40,000 times, you get your black belt. And so, um, David Goggins puts this in his book uh, and, and his story. He was fat and he was a termite. Uh, you know, he was a pest control, you know, and uh, spraying cockroaches. And so and he was down on himself and uh, he wanted to become a Navy SEAL. And he went step by step. First, he had to lose the weight. Right. Everything was step by step. Then he wanted to, to run ultra marathons step by step. Everything is step by step. And in my book, Legacy is the first chapter. I have a new program coming out, the Fit and Free Legacy Method. And so... Is that uh, with Mike? Is that with Mike? Yes, I'm working with Mike. Yeah. And so get your mind right. Awareness is the first step in anything, and nothing is more powerful than a made-up mind. Figure out what your legacy is. Figure out what you want. This is very important for a man. Women, it's a little bit different because they uh, possess the power to uh, uh, have babies. And so, and that is usually enough. And that usually wears out their body. And then the children are hardwired to them. And so uh, that is enough of a legacy, nurturing the children, nourishing and nurturing a family. Uh, and so, but men, they need to go out into the world and figure it out what direction they're going in. We live in the modern world and you can actually do anything. You've got people like, uh, uh, um, What's his name? Uh, Apple guy. Uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. And you've got the Wright brothers that wanted to fly like an eagle. You know, whatever the mind can conceive and believe is Napoleon Hill's work. You can achieve. So get your mind right. Understand the minefields and the pitfalls that are in front of you. And there are many. And we've become soft and domesticated as 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 human beings. We're in we're inside. We've got air conditioned houses. We've got soft, fake food with tons of sugar. And what's that doing to the populace? Well, just look at our statistics. 70% of the American people are obese or overweight. Now we're talking about hockey, which is super high performance, such a graceful, amazing, powerful, rough and tough sport. Um, and uh, there's so many beautiful things about it, but you still need that high performance. And so, and if you go the way statistics, that's why I love that my son in 2023 is involved with hockey. There is not too many safe grounds in the world today. I don't want my children in public school. Uh, I, you know, I don't want them, you know, surfing the internet unconsciously with their neck craned into their phone and getting all sorts of information and possible sexual predators. And so I think hockey is a beautiful thing, but my son's not living in a hockey vacuum. He's living in the real world. So if he gets a girl pregnant, well, that may affect your NHL dreams. So are you aware of that? Do you take responsibility of that? Yeah. I'm here to steer it in a, in, a, in a more sustainable, holistic direction. Well, awesome. that, well, just to go for a second, what I want to say that I, I really appreciate that question because that is what I've discovered through Paul's work, some of the stuff you do, Troy. Like there, there is a lot out there, and it's like, where do you begin? You've been in that spot. I've been in that spot. Dad, you've been in that spot many different ways. And you just touched on it, Troy, like whatever the mind can conceive, you know, you can do it. And I, that's that's the first step in your work and Paul's work is finding out that dream or that legacy or what you want to do. And ultimately, 
yeah, there's there could be 10,000 more steps. You just got to take the next one. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're never going to do it. So I think that's where it's just cool. And, and Troy Jr. is obviously blessed to have you because you just you're talking about all these concepts, but you're you're helping him kind of formulate that information into what he wants to create. He wants to be an NHL player. So you're giving him all the tools that are in life to help him achieve that goal. Everything is around that goal, but there's all these different things. So he's he's very lucky to be able to have you show him all these different things to be balanced in so he doesn't maybe, you know, make a choice that changes his dream because he can't do it anymore because now he like just using what we we're talking about has a kid now and that, that changes everything. So I think that's very cool. And I would say too that the I would add on that that there there comes a time where there's certain things that are better said by someone else. You know, I was absolutely that, that I was grateful that I was able to coach the the boys as long as I did. But there was a time where if I had a deal with our assistant coaches that if you wanted uh, to say something to your kid, have another coach say it to him. You know and uh, but that's, that's, it takes a, it takes an army to, to, uh, to get to the, you know, close to the top of the mountain and, uh, we can't specialize. We can't be the best at everything. Uh, uh, I try to stay in my lane, but, uh, the one thing that Rem and, uh, Rhett have done for, for my wife and I opened up our eyes is to, to really seek out experts in, in the field, no matter how, you know, minuscule you think it is important for you know your long-term success because there's a lot of small little sectors that have big impacts that you know most people don't even know exist yep and uh and we got the internet now so we can find those things yeah it is. yeah it's, it's crazy dad i know that we had talked about this question i might as well just ask it because like, I, I want to ask you because you've, you've put these things in my mind. I always think about, like, the two things that you've always said to me my whole life growing up. And that was you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And with that being said, figure out what you want to do. And once you know what you want to do, just move the needle ahead one little bit every day. And just keep making those little efforts and get in, get in front of the right people, all those different things. So the question to you is, Troy, based on those things that I said, is that, you know, we had I started a group chat to set this call up with your with your personal assistant. And when you have a personal assistant, you know, we're, we're curious about what he does for you. And we're assuming that he potentially frees up more time for you. And then we're curious, like, what, what do you do in your free time or how do you how do you live your days? You're you're very knowledgeable, but, you know, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. What does your personal assistant do and how does that free you up time for you to do more of the things that you love? Well, Curtis is amazing because he's a jack of all trades and uh, he built houses with his father. So he's, you know, he's handy, he's skilled. He went to college, he can type. Um, and Curtis has helped me out extensively. I mean, traditionally I like him to help me, book plane tickets, uh, follow up with podcasts, set me up, make sure I'm on schedule. Uh, you know, knickknack paddywhack stuff that really helps free up my time. You know, he looks at everything, email, software, marketing, uh, AI to, to, to write copy. Um, uh, he helps me upload videos. He's, he's really an amazing angel in my life. And it has, I never thought, I thought it was weird having a, a, an assistant, but he's so dedicated and I've had one other assistant before and he was terrible. And so, uh, yeah, Curtis is amazing. And, uh, you know, once I get my business to the next level, um, um, you know, I want to bring him in as a, as a partner because he's a, he's a team player and he's been with me for four years. So um, it's been, you know, a big learning curve, but it, it, he helps me out tremendously. And what do I like to do with my life? I like to wake up and do whatever I want, whenever I want to do it, which is mainly, Riding my bicycle, kissing on my children, going to the gym, socializing a little bit, eating super clean food, riding my bicycle, going on hikes, riding my bicycle. You know, <laughs> I just, you know, anything that's kind of like work related, stress related, like driving in a car, you know, um, I just shot 30 videos this morning. That was completely enjoyable. And then I do that once a month, right? And that's my content for the month. And so uh, I like things that are automated. 
so I can have more free time because out of my free time, that's when I get the creative ideas. That's when, you know, I'm, I'm an artist at heart. I am a digital creator. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, video maker. Um, you know, I'm a comedian. I like to express myself and I like to entertain people. I like to tickle their soul. And so, and help them think a little bit more. I'm like, you know, uh, uh, Socrates, you know, I'm here to stimulate thought. And so and make people laugh and make people laugh at themselves and not take themselves so seriously and a conduit for health and healing. Cause everybody needs healing. We're all on the same path, the journey back to God, if you will, or, you know, we're all here for our soul's growth. And so I like to help to be a catalyst for people. And the more I can feel good about that, cause I have my own inner a-hole, right? And most of my practices is because when I don't feel good or my digestion's off or I haven't got a, uh, I got a poor night's sleep, then I'm a jerk and I don't want to be a jerk. I'm actually a pretty fun, gregarious guy. I like being that guy. And so uh, most of my practices, meditation, yoga, qigong, weightlifting, I go to the gym for my mental health, not my physical health. I go there to get the serotonin and the dopamine so I can feel yeah. good. Right. And so yeah. and then I can be presentable and and out connecting with people. So that's, you know, a bit about my lifestyle right there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey, Troy, uh, you know, I got a wide variety of listeners here, but uh, where can where can people find out about the courses that uh, you offer? And then and just to, to learn more about you, what are a few uh, social media sites that they can get to? Yeah, awesome. So I'm certified health nut branded across the internet. Twitter, I'm Mr. Health Nut. I'm most active on YouTube over the years, certified health nut. Instagram is where I'm most active right now. I'm on Facebook for all you boomers out there. Uh, and so I just got 200,000 followers in the last six months over there. So Facebook is still <laughs> alive and well. I'm on, I'm on Facebook uh, and I'm on TikTok for all the newbies, but I have my social media manager handling that. Because I speak on such a wide variety of topics, I run the risk of being censored and shadow banned. And so I speak my mind and I talk about health and nothing is worse for the main businesses we have running the world right now than a healthy person. <laughs> so, so uh so TikTok, I, I stay off of most of the time, but I put, you know, very succinct health uh, and fitness content out there. Otherwise, I'm most active on, on, on Instagram. And then my website's certifiedhealthnut.com. Get on my email list for any live events. I do men's work and ice baths and uh, other types of retreats. Um, and so certifiedhealthnut.com. And then my other website is troycasey.com. And so holler at me. I'll make sure that I put all of those in the description so people can easily find you, sir. Awesome, man. This has been great. I really appreciate uh, kind of the, uh, what is that? The uh, crossover. I, I mean, this is the first time I've really done sports specific podcast. Wow. And I, I can say that there's been a pretty solid energy here, fellas. <laughs> yeah. I, I've really enjoyed it. And, just going back to some of the concepts, I know that we're kind of wrapping up here, but uh, Troy, like, I just, I love that you do weird stuff. Like, I, I feel <laughs> like, but I think it's really cool because if you look at yourself and what, you know, anyone look up Troy, his Instagram, his social media, the courses he's built, this is a man who is an entrepreneur, he's been a Versace model, he's traveled the world, you know, very chill and like uh, intuitive, and you can talk about some of the weird things that we've talked about in this con in this conversation, so I think it's really cool that you, you blend those things together. And I just think you're such an asset to, to people who can find you. And I just, I love what you talk about. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks, you know, thanks for giving me the platform. And I know I'm into a bunch of esoteric and different things, but you know, look at my skin, you know, obviously there's some application. It's like looking at Paul check deadlift, you know, 450 pounds in his fifties. Right. So, so, okay. All right. You can, cause Paul's got some very, very, challenging worldviews for a lot of people. Uh, and so, uh, but his results, my mentors told me results never lie. So um, you can argue philosoph philosophically, but uh, when you look at the results, you know, 
that's where that's where that's where the energy's at the results yeah. Yeah. well at, at some point I, I think it was jim Rohn was quoted as saying at some point we all have to face one of two pains you know the pain of discipline or the pain of regret and mm. everything you've talked about today you know some i i I chewed tobacco since I was 16 years old and I haven't had a chew since January 5th because I know at whoop, some whoop. point that's <laughs> going to come, that's going to come and bite you in the butt. Uh, very difficult to do, but uh, one thing at a time. And that's, I guess what I'm hearing from, from you, Troy is, uh, you know, start uh, throwing the antennas out, start uh, investigating and then really define what you want to, to leave as your legacy here as one of your pillars uh, and just begin. Um, so thank you for everything today. This was an amazing podcast. You're welcome. And I'll leave you with the note on tobacco because I like some tobacco too, but I've learned that you can't smoke it forever or ingest it forever. And it's highly addicting. And I use natural tobacco, of course, but here's the thing. Get some niacin, <laughs> get some niacin, and, you know, work up to your dosages because you don't want to be walking around like a lobster. It uh, has a niacin flush and it has the vasopressin, uh, which there's something that the nicotine does at the cellular level. And that will begin to put uh, push the toxins out. And you can also couple that with a sauna. So I get 50 milligram uh, tabs and uh, the niacin will help flush the body out. Well, thank you for that. Remmer? Co-host, thank you for doing that. You want to bring us home? No, Deb, I, I started it. It's, <laughs> it's, your, it's your podcast. You bring it home. I, just, I really enjoyed being here, and I, I had a lot of questions for myself, so thank you for letting me talk to Troy and, and ask some questions. Hey, if we were on a line together, I think they might be saying, like, McDavid, Dreisaitl, and uh, Casey on the left wing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. get, them out, get them out there. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys this and, you know, take some time to investigate uh, Troy Casey and what, what he's got going on because he's made his life uh, uh, a roadmap for others to follow. Uh, thank you for being uh, so generous and in, in sharing the knowledge that you have, Troy, because it just continues to benefit people day after day after day. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me on. I really appreciate you guys. And much love to all the hockey dads out there and the hockey kids and the ho hockey families. I, I, really, uh, I really like the, uh, the hockey community. Hockey moms, right. too. <laughs> the moms, too. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, guys, and uh, until next time. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed hearing Troy Casey's life journey and I'll put all his points of contact in the description so you can easily learn more about the Certified Health Nut. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon and... Do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.